not that long ago, I did a video collaboration with some friends on techniques that we often forget about and we wanted to spotlight again because they're absolutely amazing and have just taken the back seat because, you know, we have so many other things that we could be creating with. And one of the things that afterwards, when I was watching it, inspired me to do another video is colored embossing powder. I seem to have a whole drawer here filled with colored embossing powders that I rarely touch. So today I wanted to go over five cool ideas that you can use with your colored embossing powders to help you get more use out of them. So let's dive in. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is add a piece of white cardstock onto my grip mat and I'm gonna place my stencil over top. Now, one of the best tips that I learned, I think all year, it's not too often that I learn new things these days, but is to use a sponge tool or a blending tool to add embossing ink through a stencil. It helps you get into all those little nooks and crannies rather than putting your pad directly onto the stencil and kind of smooshing it through, I always got really mixed results in that way. I'm removing the stencil now and I'm gonna pour my embossing powder on top. And this is a blended embossing powder, meaning there's different types of embossing powder that are combined in one jar. They're sold this way, but you can also make your own if you have different um, types of embossing powder, especially things like chunky embossing powder, glitters and things like that. It's fun to make your own too. Now I've heated this up off screen, but don't forget as well that you could go over top of it a second time if you feel like you could get maybe a thicker look or maybe in these mixes, some of the thicker pieces didn't really stick, only some of the thin powder did. So you can go over this many times if you like with your embossing powder to get an even better look. So here is what it looks like when it's all heated up. It's super shiny, so fun, and a really great background. To create the sentiment, I'm using this high dye here and I decided that white, it kind of got lost and looked boring. So I decided to go in and ink up the sentiment as well, the same way that I did the background, but of course without the stencil this time and pour over top my embossing powders and then attach this to my cards. So this is another way to get uses out of your colored embossing powders is to die cut sentiments or shapes or images and then emboss over top of them to create really shiny looks. So here is what the card looks like when it is all finished. Super fun, shiny, and so pretty. For my next card here, I'm applying my embossing powder straight onto a piece of cardstock. So you could use your embossing powders to create yourself that really expensive glitter cardstock that you find at the craft store. Thank you, baby Jay, for telling me what to do next. I'm going to throw this through an embossing folder. So you can take this, run it through with a cover die, run it through with an embossing folder. You can do lots with these glitter cardstocks. Now I'd love to know in the comments, which color of embossing powder do you like the most or seem to use the most? I think it would be helpful for others to know as well. Do you prefer single colors or mixes? Do you use them as often as you like? Let me know all about your embossing powder experience. I can't wait to read your comments. All right, so I ran this through my die cutting machine using the appropriate sandwich for a 3D embossing folder, and then I have this really cool look. I think this looks amazing, and it's something I do, don't do often enough. And if having a full background is too much for you, just cut it down so you have a nice white border, add yourself a die cut, and you're all done. All right, so the next technique here doesn't involve any embossing ink, but you can actually attach embossing powder to double-sided adhesive. Just make sure you, when you're pouring it, that you get it not only on the top, but a little bit on the sides, because there is a little bit of a thickness to double-sided adhesive. You need to make sure the powder sticks to the sides as well, so that the tape doesn't remain sticky on the sides and then get stuck to your envelope. Just simply cut off the edges when you're finished here and then you can get started. Now this can be a little bit of a tedious process um, going through and using different powders, but for me, I really like to do this technique because it kind of allows me to swatch my embossing powders or to see what they look like when they're on the paper. And so I don't mind doing this every once in a while, especially when I get some new colors in my stash. So I'm just gonna place the first color down. I'm going to remove the uh, powder here and then I'm going to put the rest back in the jar. You'll notice that some of it sticks to the double-sided adhesive, um, like the paper on it because it's staticky. You can just take a small brush and remove it. But I only remove one strip at a time if I'm using different colors, and that way I can um, go in and switch colors easily without it getting stuck to the wrong place. 
Then you'll simply remove the next strip on your card, add the next color, and I don't heat in between. It will stay on there. Just be careful with your hands that you don't like um, go over top or, or nick it or anything like that. Um, but you don't have to heat it in between. I think that would just cause um, unnecessary warping and things like that because you're gonna continuously heat up in between. It'll stick on there really well. Um, just remove the strips, add all of them, and then heat them all at one time. I really think that paintbrush has seen some better days. So once you're finished, you can heat all of these up and then you're good to go. I know you've probably heard these tips a million times with your heat tool, but just continuously keep moving your heat tool to avoid warping. You can heat from the front, you can heat from the back, but just don't keep it on the same area too long. And the second they turn shiny, they are done. Don't overheat. Now, if you're not really good at lining your tape up, you could also just make strips on a scrap piece of paper and do the same technique, and then you can just cut them out into paper strips if you prefer. I did this as well for this card because I'm gonna be laying these over top in a crisscross pattern. But this is a great strategy if you aren't great at lining things up or making your um, adhesive strip straight or having even spacing, at least this, if you glue this with um, liquid adhesive, you have some time to kind of shift them around and make sure that they're nice and straight. So one of the things I did find was because these are a little bit thicker and they do warp a little bit, I added something heavy on top just as I was gluing so that they would stick and adhere to the cardstock um, enough so that when I trim the edges, they won't move around or shift around at all. Such a fun card, so many pretty colors and a great way to swatch out your powders to see what you own and also get that sense that you're using your powders and you've used all of them. Okay, maybe not all of them, I have way too many powders. Another thing that you can do is use these with your alphabet dies. Now, I know this is says Christmas and Christmas is long over, but the technique is still good. So I'm going in and smushing my ink pad through here. And if you don't get good results with that, then use your blending tool that works too. But because this is just a simple strip, that works for me. I'm masking it off using some removable adhesive, some mint tape and um, smushing the ink through. Then I will remove the mint tape cover the area with embossing powder and of course you can remove any excess powder that maybe gets stuck in places it shouldn't with a dry paintbrush then heat it all up melt the powder and it's all good to go but how do you use this with your alphabet dyes effectively let me show you now what I'm going to do here is just lay them on top and I'm going to line up the bottom of the letters with the line of the embossing powder at the bottom of the embossing powder. If you would like more tips when it comes to using alphabet dyes, I just created a video recently on them and I will link to it in the video description below. And you can see now that I've officially spiced up my alphabet dyes by having them half white, half with the embossing powder. You could also mask this off a second time and use two different colors of embossing powder if you want. That would make things pretty fun as well. Another way I use my double-sided adhesive tape is I will grab different sizes and thicknesses of it. So I'm using here one inch, one quarter inch, and one eighth of an inch, I believe it is, of scrapbook.com adhesive. Now you already know how this works. Remove one of the strips, add your powder, and then continue on and dump all the excess powder off in between and then you can heat it all at once but you can create your such self such fun backgrounds whether you're making diagonals or straight lines remember diagonals are more forgiving straight lines you have to be a little bit more accurate with how straight they're going to be so diagonals might be a good place to start especially if you're feeling a little unsure about this technique or have never done it before. So I'm gonna grab a whole bunch of these itty bitty flowers here that I have in my stash, and I will link to them below in the video description. They're from The Ton, they're grouped layering dies. I absolutely love them, and or stamps and dies, I should say. And I'm just gonna group them together like this. So I hope I've inspired you to breathe some new life into your colored embossing powders. I want to link to a video here that I definitely think you should check out right after this one. It's how I fell in love with my embossing powders again, just by learning something new about them that I didn't know before. So be sure to check that out. It's an oldie but a goodie and see if you'll fall in love with your embossing powders again. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm getting so close to the 100,000 followers and I absolutely appreciate everyone that watches my videos. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.